a groundbreaking study has shed unprecedented light on Jewish origins by analyzing the genome-wide DNA of 33 Jewish individuals who lived in medieval Germany during the 14th century, whose remains were discovered in the ancient Jewish cemetery of Erfurt. This research represents far more than an academic exercise in population genetics. It illuminates the genetic continuity of a people who would later face one of history's most systematic attempts at extermination during the Holocaust, when Nazi Germany murdered approximately 6 million Jews across Europe. The genetic signatures preserved in these medieval bones tell a story of survival that spans not just the catastrophic 20th century, but reaches back through centuries of persecution, expulsion, and migration. The medieval Jewish cemetery of Erfurt, located in what is now central Germany, served Jewish communities not just from the city itself, but from surrounding towns throughout the region. The cemetery's history reflects the tragic pattern of medieval Jewish life, periods of relative prosperity punctuated by violent persecution. The first Jewish community in Erfurt existed from the late 11th century until 1349, when most Jews were murdered during one of the many pogroms that swept through Europe during the Black Death period. Remarkably, Jews returned to establish a second community in 1354, which lasted until their final expulsion in 1454. The 33 individuals studied lived during this tumultuous 14th century period. Their bones recovered during a salvage archaeological excavation in 2013. The ages at death ranged from 5 to 60 years old, with nearly half being younger than 20, reflecting the harsh realities of medieval life. Particularly poignant was the discovery of one individual who died from multiple blows to the head from a sharp weapon, a stark reminder of the violence that periodically erupted against Jewish communities. The researchers faced unique ethical considerations in studying these remains. Jewish religious law generally prohibits the exhumation and disturbance of Jewish graves. However, after extensive consultation with rabbinical authorities and approval from the Jewish community of Thuringia, Germany, the study proceeded with strict guidelines. Only detached teeth could be used for analysis, and the research could only be conducted on already excavated individuals. Following the completion of the genetic analysis, all skeletal remains were respectfully reburied in the 19th century Jewish cemetery. The extraction and analysis of DNA from these 700-year-old teeth required cutting-edge techniques specifically designed for ancient genetic material. DNA degrades over time, breaking into shorter fragments and accumulating chemical damage that can interfere with analysis. The researchers used specialized protocols to extract genetic material from the cementum and dentin of the teeth, then employed targeted enrichment techniques to focus on approximately 1.24 million specific genetic markers across the genome. One of the most significant findings was the remarkable genetic similarity between these medieval Erfurt Jews and modern Ashkenazi Jewish populations. This similarity was so pronounced that when the researchers plotted the genetic data using principal component analysis, a statistical technique that reveals population relationships, the medieval and modern individuals clustered together almost perfectly. This finding suggests an extraordinary degree of genetic continuity over nearly 700 years, indicating minimal gene flow from surrounding non-Jewish populations into the Ashkenazi gene pool during this period. However, the medieval Jewish population was not genetically uniform, the researchers identified two distinct subgroups within the Erfurt community, which they termed Erfurt EU and Erfurt ME, based on their relative genetic affinity to Eastern European and Middle Eastern populations respectively. The Erfurt EU group showed evidence of additional Eastern European ancestry compared to modern Ashkenazi Jews, while the Erfurt ME group more closely resembled modern Ashkenazi Jews of Western European origin and Sephardic Jews. The analysis of mitochondrial DNA, which is inherited exclusively through the maternal line, revealed fascinating insights into Jewish maternal ancestry. Mitochondrial DNA is particularly useful for tracing deep population history because it doesn't undergo recombination and accumulates mutations at a relatively predictable rate, making it an excellent molecular clock for timing evolutionary events. Among the 31 unrelated individuals from Erfurt, a remarkable 35% carried the K1A1B1A mitochondrial lineage, which is one of four maternal lineages that together account for about 40% of modern Ashkenazi Jewish women. This lineage is virtually absent in non-Jewish populations, making it a distinctive marker of Jewish ancestry. The high frequency of this lineage in the medieval population, actually higher than in modern Ashkenazi Jews at 20%,
provides compelling evidence that the genetic bottleneck that shaped modern Ashkenazi populations had already occurred by the 14th century. The researchers conducted sophisticated Bayesian analysis to estimate when these maternal lineages first appeared. Their analysis suggested that the most recent common ancestor of all K1, A1B1A, carriers lived approximately 1,500 years ago, slightly earlier than previous estimates, but consistent with the emergence of distinct Jewish populations during late antiquity. Y chromosome analysis, which traces paternal lineages, complemented the mitochondrial findings. While the paper doesn't detail specific Y chromosome haplogroups extensively, the overall genetic patterns support the same conclusion. The major genetic structure of Ashkenazi Jewish populations was established well before the medieval period studied. One of the most significant aspects of Ashkenazi Jewish genetic history is evidence of a severe population bottleneck, a dramatic reduction in population size that leaves lasting genetic signatures. This bottleneck is evident in several ways, the high frequency of otherwise rare genetic variants, the presence of long stretches of identical DNA shared between unrelated individuals, and elevated levels of runs of homozygosity. Runs of homozygosity are stretches of DNA where an individual has inherited identical genetic material from both parents, indicating that those parents shared common ancestry in the relatively recent past. The Erfurt individuals showed substantially higher levels of these runs, compared to other historical European populations, with an average of 44 centimorgans per individual in segments longer than 4 centimorgans. To put this in perspective, this level is consistent with what would be expected in a population that had experienced a severe reduction in size. The researchers used sophisticated demographic modeling based on patterns of DNA sharing to reconstruct the history of this bottleneck. Their models suggest that the bottleneck began approximately 1,000 years ago, coinciding with the formation of the earliest Ashkenazi communities in the Rhineland. The effective population size during this bottleneck was estimated at fewer than 2,000 individuals, representing the genetic ancestors of a population that would eventually grow to over 10 million people. The genetic bottleneck that shaped Ashkenazi Jewish populations had profound medical consequences that persist today. When populations undergo severe reductions in size, harmful genetic variants can become more common through a process called genetic drift, where random events rather than natural selection determine which variants survive. Modern Ashkenazi Jewish populations carry elevated frequencies of variants causing numerous genetic diseases, including Tay-Sachs disease, Gaucher disease, and cystic fibrosis. These variants are extremely rare in other populations, but can reach frequencies of 1-4% to in Ashkenazi Jews, leading to the development of comprehensive genetic screening programs. The genetic continuity revealed by the Erfurt study thus represents something profound. Despite centuries of persecution, displacement, and attempts at destruction. The Jewish people maintained not only their cultural and religious identity, but also their biological continuity. The genetic diversity revealed by the Erfurt study mirrors an equally rich history of Jewish cultural expression that has evolved across centuries and continents. The Ashkenazi Jews of Eastern Europe, whose genetic origins the Erfurt study illuminated, developed distinctive clothing traditions that balanced religious requirements with practical needs in often hostile environments. Men wore the traditional black hat, or yarmulke, often accompanied by prayer shawls, called talitot during religious services. The iconic long black coats, known as bekishe or capotes, served both religious and practical purposes, providing modesty while offering protection during harsh Eastern European winters. Women covered their hair after marriage, often with elaborately decorated headscarves or wigs called scheitels, and wore modest dresses with long sleeves that reflected both religious law and the fashion sensibilities of their time and place. What's fascinating is how these Ashkenazi traditions differed dramatically from those of Sephardic Jews, whose ancestors were expelled from Spain in 1492 and settled throughout the Ottoman Empire, North Africa, and eventually the Americas. Sephardic Jewish women in Morocco developed stunning ceremonial dress, featuring elaborate silver jewellery, colourful embroidered kaftans, and intricate headdresses that incorporated local Berber and Arab influences, while maintaining Jewish modesty requirements. The Mizrahi Jews of the Middle East developed yet another distinct aesthetic, with Iraqi Jewish women traditionally wearing beautiful silk dresses with geometric patterns that echoed ancient Mesopotamian designs, while Ethiopian Jewish women created striking white cotton dresses called Habesha Kemis, often adorned with colourful embroidered borders that reflected their unique African Jewish heritage. 
These garments weren't merely fashion choices, but served as visual markers of identity that allowed Jewish communities to recognize one another across vast distances and cultural divides. Perhaps most remarkable are the clothing traditions of the isolated Jewish communities that maintained their practices for centuries in remote locations. The Jews of Cochin, India, developed a unique blend of Indian and Jewish dress, with women wearing saris in distinctly Jewish colour patterns and men adopting local Indian clothing styles while maintaining religious head coverings. Similarly, the Jewish communities of Central Asia created elaborate silk robes, called chapans, that incorporated both Persian design elements and Jewish symbolic motifs, creating garments that were simultaneously local and unmistakably Jewish. Within this diverse landscape of Jewish cultural expression, Orthodox Judaism represents the most traditional and religiously observant approach to Jewish life. Orthodox Jews adhere strictly to Jewish law, or halakha, believing that the Torah was divinely given to Moses at Mount Sinai, and that rabbinical interpretations provide binding guidance for all aspects of daily existence. This fundamental commitment creates a distinctive lifestyle that encompasses not only religious practices, but also social structures, educational systems, and community organization. Any Jew can choose to become Orthodox, though this decision involves embracing an entirely different way of life, centered around religious observance and community participation. The transition requires learning complex religious laws, adopting new dietary restrictions, and accepting social customs that may be dramatically different from previous experience. Modern Orthodox Jews seek to balance strict religious observance with engagement in contemporary society, pursuing secular careers while maintaining traditional practices. Ultra-Orthodox communities, known as Haredi, maintain stricter separation from secular society, with distinctive dress codes and educational systems that emphasize religious study over secular subjects. Hasidic Judaism represents another Orthodox movement characterized by mystical spirituality and devotion to charismatic rabbinical leaders. Different Hasidic groups maintain their own customs and even distinct styles of dress, creating visual diversity within Orthodox communities that reflects their varied historical origins and spiritual traditions. The religious practices that define Orthodox life create a comprehensive framework, governing virtually every aspect of daily existence. Orthodox Jews observe Shabbat from Friday evening to Saturday evening as a complete day of rest, refraining from work, driving, using electricity, or handling money. This weekly rhythm prioritizes spiritual reflection and family connection over material pursuits, creating what many describe as a taste of divine perfection in an ordinary world. Kashrut, the complex system of Jewish dietary laws, shapes orthodox eating habits in ways that extend far beyond simple food restrictions. Orthodox Jews consume only kosher food prepared according to specific religious guidelines, with separate dishes and cooking implements for meat and dairy products that can never be mixed. This creates a distinctive food culture that influences social interaction, travel arrangements, and residential choices, as Orthodox families typically live in communities with kosher restaurants and institutional food services. Prayer occupies a central place in Orthodox Jewish life, with observant men required to pray three times daily using traditional Hebrew liturgy that has remained largely unchanged for over a thousand years. Men wear prayer shawls and small leather boxes, called tefillin during morning prayers, physical reminders of their covenant with God that create visible markers of religious identity, connecting them directly to ancient practice. The major Jewish festivals create annual cycles of celebration that unite Orthodox communities worldwide, while highlighting the agricultural and historical foundations of Jewish civilization. Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year occurring in early autumn, begins 10 days of repentance culminating in Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, when observant Jews fast for 25 hours while engaging in intensive prayer and self-examination. These High Holy Days represent the most solemn period of the Jewish calendar, requiring extensive spiritual preparation and community participation in lengthy religious services. Passover commemorates the exodus from Egypt through elaborate ritual meals called cedars, that combine historical narrative, symbolic foods, and religious instruction in celebrations lasting several hours. Orthodox families spend weeks preparing for Passover, removing all leavened products from their homes, and replacing regular dishes with special Passover sets, creating dramatic transformations of domestic space that reinforce the holiday's themes of liberation and spiritual renewal. Sukkot, the festival of booths, requires Orthodox families to build temporary outdoor shelters, where they eat meals for seven days, commemorating the ancient Israelites' wilderness wandering while celebrating the autumn harvest. 
This practice creates distinctive visual markers in orthodox neighbourhoods, where elaborate temporary structures appear in backyards and on balconies, demonstrating the community's commitment to maintaining ancient agricultural traditions in contemporary urban settings. Purim celebrates the salvation of Persian Jews as recorded in the Book of Esther, transforming Orthodox communities into joyous celebrations featuring costumes, theatrical performances and charitable giving. Hanukkah, the eight-day festival of lights commemorating the rededication of the ancient temple, involves nightly candlelighting ceremonies that illuminate Orthodox homes throughout the winter season, creating warm family traditions that connect contemporary observance to ancient historical events. Orthodox Jewish education reflects the community's commitment to preserving traditional learning while preparing young people for contemporary life. Orthodox children typically attend Jewish day schools that combine religious instruction with secular subjects, creating educational environments where Jewish values permeate all aspects of learning. Boys often continue to advanced religious seminaries called yeshivas, where they engage in intensive study of Talmud and Jewish law using analytical methods unchanged for centuries. Marriage and family life in Orthodox communities follow traditional patterns that emphasize religious continuity and community connection. Orthodox Jewish weddings involve elaborate ritual celebrations, while marriage itself is viewed as a religious partnership dedicated to creating Jewish homes and raising observant children. These communities typically have large families, with children raised in environments where religious practice and community involvement create strong cultural identity and social support systems. The relationship between Orthodox Judaism and other Jewish movements reflects fundamental disagreements about religious authority and the role of tradition in contemporary life. Conservative Judaism accepts the binding nature of Jewish law, but allows for more flexible interpretation, while Reform Judaism emphasizes ethical teachings over ritual observance and supports individual autonomy in religious decision-making. These theological differences create practical distinctions in religious practice and community organization that sometimes generate tension within broader Jewish communities. Despite these differences, Orthodox Judaism has experienced remarkable growth in recent decades, with thriving communities demonstrating the continued appeal of traditional religious life in an increasingly secular world. Orthodox communities have successfully adapted ancient practices to contemporary circumstances, while maintaining their essential character, creating institutions that serve both their own members and the broader Jewish community. Just as genetic research reveals Jewish continuity across centuries despite migration and persecution, Orthodox communities demonstrate how religious tradition can maintain cultural continuity while adapting to new circumstances and challenges. In understanding this genetic and cultural history, we gain not just scientific knowledge, but a deeper appreciation for the complex interplay between biology, culture, and historical experience that shapes human populations and their remarkable capacity for survival.